Do you think the Ravens need another linebacker? Which second year player should make the biggest jump from last season? Can I find any possible way to love team keep it clean even more? Now that last one was just a little bonus. But these questions on this episode of NFL questions from subscribers. And this feels like a dream. So YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subs. And this is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any team, player, whatever, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of NFL questions from subs, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. If you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Sad news because this is the final edition of the special question from subscribers featuring our guy, the couch rider Raven himself, Jermaine Lockett. So, I appreciated him coming on. I know y'all appreciated him coming on as well. Shout out to him for making the time to come on. So thank you. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Without further ado, let's do it. The last question on this episode, a question from subscribers, came from my boy Greg. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you're having a great day. Uh, the biggest reason I want Justin Houston isn't for on-field production necessarily, but to be another very smart veteran leader to learn from, especially for Adafi away. His leadership would be great, but besides that part, do you think the Ravens need another linebacker? I don't. I no. Do you, do you think they need another linebacker? I do. Nope. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Uh, look, when, when we brought in Eric Weddle, uh, Eric Weddle brought in a lot of leadership at the time. But I want <laughs> you to go back and, 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 and think about this. When the first time the Ravens <laughs> with Lamar faced Kansas uh, City, Gosh. Where did that leadership get us? <laughs> he was a little slow on that on that fourth. Or was it fourth and twelve or something? I don't remember. Oh, oh, that's he was weak hated running it. past him. Hated and it. Juking up the whole defense. <sighs> Veteran leadership is important. I get it. Okay, but we got McPhee for that. We got McPhee for that. To bring in another veteran who's, I mean, they they think in just more of a leadership aspect and taking reps away mm -hmm. from these young stars who need those opportunities. You're going to hurt on the back end. The, the youth, it's a youth man. It's a young man's gang right now. If you bring in Justin Houston, he doesn't bring the full talent and impact that we're expecting out of a player that we just drafted first round, and you're going to just stunt his growth. I mean, there's plenty of opportunities, plenty of examples that we've seen in the past. Lee Evans, for instance. I mean, I know I hate to bring that name up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we want to bring up these examples. I can bring up a million of them. Lee Evans probably stunted some of Torrey Smith's growth. And, you know, if Torrey had been there for that catch, and was it 2011 playoffs? I mean, in the AFC Championship game, Baltimore probably in the Super Bowl had that been Tory. It was Lee. Lee had the experience. He had the mindset, but the body wasn't there. Everything you needed wasn't there for regular Lee Evans that we expected from the Buffalo Bills. He brought it over to Baltimore, and it was more injured and inconsistency when we could have brought Tory Smith along a little further on his path sooner. And Baltimore could have been in the championship that year. They could have been in the Super Bowl that year. So you're only stunting these young players' growth when you're bringing in these Asian veterans that cost a little bit more. You know, EDC is, like I said, every dollar counts. <laughs> he wants to make sure that he's getting everything he can get out of these young players for the best price for their first contracts. To constantly bring in these veterans that are overly expensive, it's just going to hurt the team, and you're not going to get as much out of the young bucks as you want. Okay, and this bonus question. He said, who do you think uh, that was drafted last year will make the biggest jump this season? His pick is Matabike. Um, that will make the biggest jump? I, I can't really say J.K. Dobbins because I feel like like J.K., like he did really good last year. Um, so, yeah, I, I say Patrick Queen. Okay. I say Patrick Queen because – Patrick Queen last season, I always talk about it, how he, he started off hot, man. He started off hot. Uh, he was doing his thing, then he sort of slowed down a bit. Uh, he started disappearing a little bit. Um, 
but with him and, and then I know there was sometimes in past coverage where he would just struggle sometimes when he just he would just get beat mm-hmm. and not to say that he can't get beat it's impossible for him to get beat but it, it seemed like it was more due to uh, a, a technique um, maybe I don't want to say lack of preparation but just just being at the wrong place at the wrong time um, sometimes it was a uh, a late reaction time uh, to something that was going, but with Patrick Queen, I will say, but overall he had a really good rookie season and he had that great, really good rookie season with no off season. But this year with him being able to be with the coaches, be with the players, be with the team, be at the facility, be there. Then I expect him to take a big jump this year as, as a player, uh, even as a leader. Um, cause we, we were talking about it early offline that I, I expect that Patrick Queen, and I'm sure a lot of y'all do too, expect him to get that green dot, not this year, maybe next year, yeah. uh, but to get that green dot, uh, for him to be the one calling the play since he's the linebacker of the future. Um, and the linebacker, not even this of the future right now, but as that middle linebacker, you know, that's what Ravens like, that's what they like sending the plays to, uh, minus Eric Weddle, but I mean, yeah, speaking of Eric, you got Eric Weddle in my head now. Like, man, <laughs> then, you brought up, then you brought up that play, too. You got me thinking about C.J. Mosley on that play and Tyreek Hill. And that, boy, that, boy, that game was just tough. It was hurtful. It was a heartbreaker, you know. And yeah. it was because, you know, Eric should have been on the sideline helping, you know, helping call <laughs> defensive plays, honestly. You know, let the young bucks, the young, fresh legs handle Tyreek because that dude is nasty. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I think that's honestly what you're preparing for is what beat you the previous year. We've done it multiple times. Uh, and then, of course, speaking of preparation for that, uh, you got Matt BK. Honestly, I, I think it's going to be a Matt BK or you know, I'm, gonna, I'm about to shock you all with something here. If he gets the opportunity uh, for the slot is James Prochet. Uh, I, I absolutely loved watching James Prochet. I got a YouTube video out there showing a couple of his routes. Uh, he and last year he had this. Uh, I want to say it was a whip route. The first time against the Steelers, it cost a pick six because he didn't run it all the way through. And it was it was bad. It was bad at how he ran that route. He should have continued to run with it instead of sitting down on it. But then against the Titans, you see him run this route and put this guy on skates, and then he makes a 13 yard gain. It was the one route that he caught of the season, uh, one catch of the year but I think he needs more opportunities. I think this guy can be just as good, if not better, than Snead if he's given that opportunity. So if Sammy goes down, I have full confidence that James Prochet can win that battle to be that slot master that we need. As I just look at his routes and a couple of his games that he played, oh, my goodness. Like, you could see him be that wily receiver that you needed. He was just slipping beyond the coverages. Whenever they were running zone, he was running just right behind him. He found the holes in the zone. He was able to sit down where it needed. He made big plays when it came to the slot and actually moving to the outside on fades. Guys, guys got it. He's got a complete game when it comes to the slot. He just needs the opportunities. And that's why I was kind of really much against, like, bringing in another veteran wide receiver because I could see him getting pushed down and never getting to see the light of day for yeah. his opportunities. DuVernay is already there. Wallace is already there, and so there's going to be tons of competition at that at that spot. Please. To have another you know person compete in there, he'd be on the streets right now. Yeah, yeah that's that that is true, and I I've, I've said it too that I think that I think right now that he's on the bubble. I think he's yeah. on the roster bubble because that receiver room, it's crowded. It's very that's crowded. Not not as crowded as the tight end room, but. That receiver room is crowded. So yeah, you already know somebody gonna get that pinky injury or whatever, just a little bit of a little hangnail, and they're gonna get put on a uh, IR for. Yeah, <laughs> okay. somebody yeah. Sneezed, they sneeze the wrong way. That's it. Mm-hmm. Right, 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 was, that, was, that a, was that a sneeze? Was, yeah, yeah. IR right now. You. Yeah, yeah. We got. We can preserve you. You going to the IR? But I'm like, coach, no, I'm good for the year. No, no, no. It's just a hangnail, man. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Can't rescue, buddy. Can't. Be a rep, <laughs> shout out! Shout out to Tim White. Yes, yes. I loved him. Oh, my goodness. Acrobatic catches. And when he had that family day game, I believe it was just a – it was a camp, you know, game or whatever, but it was, they invited the family out. Yeah, some amazing catches that day. Mm-hmm. And at camp, of course, he was always impressing. And I feel bad that, you know, Baltimore just couldn't keep him on. I felt like he mm-hmm. could have done something big. But I'm always a big fan of the lower name wide receivers. You know, remember Spider-Man back in the day with Demetrius Williams. Uh, Tandon oh, Doss was – I was, like, a huge fan of, like, 
Tanner was, I thought for sure, like, hey, this is the next Anquan Bowden. I mean, that was Flacco's pick, right? I think yeah, I was like, hey, you know, him and him and Flacco, they just went on the same page, especially when I guess they were off on the uh, connection there and Tannen may have went a little bit deeper than he was supposed to go on one of his routes and it caused a pick. And that was kind of like the end of Tannen after that. He got in Harbaugh's doghouse and couldn't get out unless he was on special teams. I'm like, oh, oh man, hmm. I wanted the best for him. And then, you know, because it was like back then it was the Marlon Brown versus Tannen yeah. Dogs. Who's going to be – that guy and and of course Marlon ended up winning out temporarily and then just kind of faded out into non-existence. So it was just like, see that that um that reminds me of what you said. Now with me, this, especially this year, I was like, hey, bring on whatever receiver is going to be Julio. Bring mm-hmm. him on. I was with it, but um, it 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 does put other people it does bury other people on a depth chart because that's mm-hmm. exactly what happened with Marlon Brown. Yeah, check out my YouTube video of uh, we got Julio at home. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> <laughs> with um with Marlon Brown, his rookie year, he came on the scene. He had what I think seven touchdowns. I want to say, yeah, um, broke the Ravens' rookie record for touchdowns. And I'm thinking, mm-hmm. oh, we we don't found a gem. This is our guy, man. Yeah. Mar- and this guy was undrafted. I'm like, he went to Georgia. He's like six mm-hmm. four. Like this is outside receiver. We got our guy. Yep. Finally, like we actually got one and we made him. Yep. And then the following year, that was 2013. 2014, uh, Steve Smith Sr. Mm-hmm. He came along. Um, when did we get Mike Wallace? I think Mike Wallace was the maybe the was he the year? Yeah, when did we get Mike Wallace? Right. Yeah, yeah. But that with Marlon Brown, he um this rookie season, amazing, did his thing, and then disappeared. Yeah. Got put down a depth chart, and then that was it. That was a wrap from there. I think, I think like Kamar Aiken ended up beating him Kamar out. Kamar Aiken? Oh. Yeah. Now, yeah, that Kamar Aiken was definitely 2000. That was, his year was 2015 when he mm-hmm. just went off. But he had been around for a little while. Um, yeah, with the Patriots or something. He went to the Colts. And I think he was on the pack. Before the Ravens, I think I'm not 100 percent sure. Though. I would think he was though. But I thought Joe had a real connection with him. I thought for sure they'd keep him on because it was just like he was a chain mover. He wasn't magnificent, but it was a hey, let's get the job done. And that was the piece that Joe needed for his game was to be able to move the chains because we know Joe he could bomb it like crazy. Yeah, he definitely had that deep ball. Mm-hmm. But once he get down to that 30 yard line, I mean, he's taking four sacks or taking three sacks, and then the greatest kicker all time comes out and does his thing, you know. And right. even with that, I, I think if Justin Tucker was on another team, then he wouldn't be considered the best kicker in the league uh, or even one of the best of all time because yeah. Ray. <laughs> yeah. Joe Flacco is going to introduce Justin Tucker to the Hall of Fame <laughs> <laughs> because he made it happen. <laughs> the people will be mad at me, like, man, you already taking shots at Joe. That's my guy. You yeah. can't call Joe. Look, I'm telling you, Joe had an amazing playoff run. Mm-hmm. Magnificent. He had a good 2014 when he hit the, the 4,000 yards or whatever. And he, he turns up in the playoffs. But regular season, Joe, oh, I, I I think I've yelled at some TVs. That's some TV <laughs> therapy right now because of the things that I put that TV through because I'm yelling, throw the ball, Joe. Throw the ball, Joe. Mm. And then Joe's on his back. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Come on, like, why do you take the sack, Joe? Like, oh, the dude was wild. Joe, what? And then that Bills game where he threw the five picks. So I was like, Hmm. Okay, okay, we got it. That was Nate Peterman before Nate Peterman. I mean, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. he was he wasn't he was. He was I'm not saying and before that game for that one game I'm talking about. Of course, you know Joe, he had some some ups. He had some real big ups. But oh yeah, majority That's like cool. like he rode Ray Rice in a great defense for the majority of his years, and you know and then of course when they went away, you could start to see that some of the decline. Uh, when it came to Flacco, and I, like I appreciate everything Joe Flacco did for the Ravens, no doubt. For like, sure. hey, you know, great dude. But I was so happy I was there the night Lamar Jackson got drafted. I was in Dallas Cowboys Stadium, and honestly, I was frustrated as all get out about to leave <laughs> because <laughs> uh, we drafted Hayden Hurst after all the trading back and trading and trading back. I'm just like, man, screw it. So I did actually leave. I got to the car and we're riding down the road, and. Mm-hmm. Oh, I man. see this motorcycle, like, do this white line and thing, popping a wheelie yeah. past the car. And for some reason, the radio popped on right at that moment. And it said the Eagles had traded the pick. 
And I'm in the car just like going nuts. Turn the car around. Turn the car. Around. Like, we ain't stuck in track. I'm like, need to go back. We need to go back. And that's when the Lamar Jackson era started. I was so pumped, like crazy. And that's when, of course, I went to go look at it even more video. I saw a few videos and everybody was like dissing Lamar. And I was like, I can't wait to see another, you know, mobile quarterback. I want to see a guy play football like I play Madden, you know, because for years, what did I do? I would put in Troy Smith. I take out Joe Flacco. I put in Tyrod Taylor. I put in Joe Flacco. We didn't have a mobile signal call on Madden one year. I was hot. (laughs) I was like, I'm trading for whoever in franchise because (laughs) I loved watching a mobile guy who could run out of the pocket and make plays down the field. And then, of course, make it, make you know, use that next element. The thing, like, you know, like Vic said, hey, if there's 11 on 11, ain't nobody covering you, man. (laughs) He's like, "You, you wide open. If everybody's covered, if they got man coverage, and that's why those teams they you know they play the man coverage, they they in trouble because yeah. that leaves them all wide open if he drags everything. Shout out to Graven.